It's on Monday. Welcome back to to the podcast. We're here today. I thought we could have a bigger guest than Miguel. We have Miguel and Griff Gryffindor, Main Mark Murph. He has forty thousand names. Griff, how are you? I am doing good. I'm just here chilling on this Sunday, uh, talking to you guys, watching the football game all at once, and excited to be on your Fuck podcast. What Ooh. football? Game? Uh, Rams what? Cowboys. Raider why do we see football and talks? Even- Pick a team ass. Pick pick a place to run your games. I'm watching on DAZN. Oh, like the Raiders see. won today. Wow. Surprising. Everybody won. Everybody won today. Yeah. Is you know who didn't win? Who? Who's that? Tom Brady. Oh. Gotta love the Bucks, right? It takes one game for Griff to just, like, just turn on Tom Brady. That's sad. It is sad. Right. I turned I, I turn it on when he left. You were being mean to Tom Brady on Twitter, Griff. Just thought I'd mention that. I was being mean, I'll admit it, but I'm like, I'm not totally turning on it. It's like what I said. I love the guy, but do I right now after seeing how he did today, do I miss him? Nah. Griff, Tom Brady makes a playoff run, goes to the Super Bowl. You buy a jersey or you don't buy a jersey? I'm not Who buying do the Patriots play next week. Seattle, Sunday night football. Oh, they're okay. done for. Okay. Yeah, I was gonna destroy him. That's 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 a little tougher. I was gonna say because I love Cam. I I've gone on the record of saying that I before we got Mariota and everyone else, I was uh, hoping we'd get him as our backup and uh, just you know if he becomes a starter, he becomes a starter. But so I love the guy, but let's see what he does against an actual competent team because y'all play the Dolphins and Brady played the, the Saints. So let's see let's see what happens next week. Exactly, because Brady's got the buck. I'm not going to say Brady's got the Buccaneers. Uh, the Bucks have the Panthers next week, so you're right in that sense. But even too, like, yeah, like I want to see how the Patriots do against Seattle, and then we play you guys. It's uh, Raiders in two weeks, and then it's Kansas City after that. So it's going to be a bit of tough sledding ahead for New England. So yeah, I, I got a question for the for the football minds in the call. Sorry, Justin, you can take a nap, but um, I take a nap, dude. this is <laughs> <laughs> he's listening to Dua Lipa. <laughs> so, can't so listen music to a podcast. Serious, qu- serious question slash. This is kind of like a meme. Um, what are your thoughts on Mitch Trubisky? Oh man, <laughs> <laughs> you you can go first, Griff. <laughs> Two, okay. I under I didn't watch much of the game today, but I watched the last drop, like the last two minutes, like the touchdown, Anthony Miller, and all that. I feel like it's he's Jekyll and Hyde. He's for every good action, he does something bad. Kind of like what we saw with, and Justin will attest this to, like with Pascal in the playoffs this past year, where it's like, hey, he may do something good, but then he'll do something bad. And I feel like the Bears fans kind of like turned on him so quickly, and then all of a sudden they just loved him. So it's always a, it's a mixed bag reaction. But then again, too, it was the it was the Lions they played today. Like, like how Miguel said to me, hey, I want to see Cam against a good team like Seattle next week. I want to see how Mitch does against a good team and a better defense. Not knocking the Lions' defense. I'm just saying I want to see him against, like, Green Bay or Minnesota or even – I think they play New Orleans at some point this year as well. See, I I have a feeling, and I said this kind of like as a bold a bold pick. Um, I have a feeling that the Packers, I feel like we're going to have to play the Bears. Well, we play us in the last week, it's Bears-Packers. I have a feeling that that's going to be for the NFC North. I just have a hunch that that'll be, like, a big game. I don't know why. Um, I don't know why I think the Bears are going to be so good this year, but, like, I don't know. That makes I two just... of us. Here we go. Like... Here we go. I got a question right now. I, you guys have never watched football with Griff in your life. I have met multiple times. Griff, how do you remember everywhere, every player's either high school or college and recite <laughs> it on cue? When they come out screen. Because I know the players, they I they they're not doing it this year because of uh, COVID, but they're just showing like all the players and like their pro football focus score. But so far from what I've seen, you never saw that the whole and, NBC and tour, the see, like oh, um, Tom Brady, Michigan, uh, Sony Michelle, Georgia, James White, Wisconsin, Jimmy Garoppolo, Jimmy Garoppolo, uh, Eastern Illinois. There it is. Same school as Sean well, Payton and uh, uh, let's see, uh, Akeem Talib. Kansas. Uh, I'm trying to think. Anyway. You think playing? You think you just stop Griff? Mike? No, I'm <laughs> yep. just. I just want to know. It's like you know, it's like uh, it's like Meltzer and like wrestling knowledge. Like you just throw it out there and see hey, if you can hey, answer. Well, well, hold on. 
Hold on. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's it's like it's a, a, it's like a game. Asking what date, what arena place uh, a, a pay per view took. That's yeah. That's like a better analogy. Um, but yeah. or Tashar's weird recollection of random title reigns. Yeah, sure. I'll never. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Griff, do you think you could be an NFL player? I mean, NFL player, an NFL ref? Because when we're watching games together, <laughs> you start doing play calls. I think I could. It's just I don't know if I would do it just because of my like sole allegiance. Because I actually know I think like five or ten years ago there was an official like a fire for posting like Saint like they found Saint stuff. I think it wasn't even on his Facebook. I think it was on his wife's Facebook. So at the end of the day, could I be it? Like would it, it'd be a cool job to have. But those guys too aren't full time reps. Like those guys do a full time job. They literally like work like as I think Gene Steratore was a owns his own like plumbing company in Pittsburgh, and then he was would do that Monday to Friday, and then Saturday he'd fly out to the game, and then Monday morning's back at the office. So it's not the most glamorous job, but it's still, it would still be pretty cool. If I think the want... better question is if Griff could be an NBA ref, because he was talking so much trash. No, oh, no, no, my gosh. oh, my gosh, Jason Tatum, they're treating him like LeBron, my poor Raptors. When, when, when you watch a game with Griff, he's doing the 15-yard penalty first down. He's doing the arm thing. He's doing the... Pass interference. He's throwing the flags on the play. You don't. You're getting the full experience with Griff. Well, at least he's into the game. Unlike you, when you watch a rumble, you show I'm, no emotion. Yeah, exactly. Nothing's you going. Excite yourself. Like <laughs> the most emotion I've seen him show was when Roman came out at 30 um, in 2017, when we were all like flipping shit, <laughs> and he's just there. It's like this they want to heal heat from. It's like they want him to be a fucking bad guy. Like I just remember that clip because all of us were shocked, and then he's just there, like, like really, motherfucker, really. <laughs> yes. But no, Miguel. To the Jason Tatum point, like I love him as a player. It's just there's some calls where I'm just like, oh man, I wish like that's all. Like I like J- like I like actually like, respect Jason Tatum as a player, but like there are some of the calls of the refs where I'm just like, oh boy, just because we all know refs in the NBA are a little sketchy. But even though Game Seven, they were pretty good. Even I think the pitch. problem is, like, you guys and your Toronto fan base with the Raptors, you guys hype them up more than they need to be. And they're Toronto, they're, a good team. they're, they're a good underappreciated team, you know? champions of all time, dude. Oh come on! Be- well, <laughs> you guys played the you guys played a depleted Warriors team. It, I'm not saying your title me- means nothing, Oof. but it is going to be hard to we get knocked, credit. We knocked them down one by one. Oh God. You know? <laughs> if if it, oh, dude, honestly, if if they just at least had Clay, they didn't need, they didn't need KD. I mean, they could have you know had him, but they just needed Clay, and they you I don't know if you guys would have won. If they had honestly, if well, if they had obviously if they had KD and Clay, you guys had no chance against them. I don't know. I don't know. We were two and zero and beat them in the oh. regular season. <laughs> oh God. I don't know. Um, yeah, well, tell tell uh, your buddy over there, Mister 140 million dollar. What's the difference between regular season and showing up in the playoffs? You didn't do shit in the playoffs. Oh, I, I'm to wear it. I have, a, I have a jersey. I have a jersey hung up in my closet. I can't even wear it because I'll get. <laughs> yeah, <wearing>. don't wear it. <laughs> um, <laughs> yelled, oh, you're wearing that guy's jersey. Wear wear your Dua Lipa shirt. That'll get you more respect than I'll, that Pascal Siakam shirt. I wear, I, wear, I wear my Lowry jersey. <laughs> Wait, Justin, what would get you worse uh, rep right now if you wore that or if you wore your Life Rips hoodie out in public? I don't know. Oof. I don't think no, – no one really noticed when I wear Life Rips, but people will notice I wore a Siakam jersey. Yeah. That's true. The only um, people that know Life Rips is, like, the people that also have Life Rip shirts on. Yeah, I know. You're just, you're just in. Everyone else is just, it's just some words. Just some look at, dude, you and that guy from Revolution, it'd be like you look at each other and it's like, oh, man, like especially okay. today. Like, Ooh, oh, not me. <laughs> um. Well. The only thing I'll say about Pascal is that he's he's straight up he's not a Batman. We found that out very quickly. He needs a Robin, and we'll see what happens with the honest stuff. But for now, I think they need someone else. And two, Miguel, I actually have a theory about the finals last year. I honestly think if the Warriors weren't going into Game Five, say if it was two two, like they split in Oakland, I don't think KD comes back. I think KD came back because they were desperate and they were down three one, and him getting hurt. Because like I always had a feeling he was more hurt than they were really saying, but. Mm-hmm. I'm not like I not wish I didn't wish y'all well on him and I felt bad when he tore his Achilles, but that was just that's just my take on it. I think that if hey, 
Durant only played because they were down three one. It was a bit of a desperation move on the team. No, I think that would have been that would have been worse if he sat out and they won without him because that just adds to the whole argument that he didn't need he didn't need to go there when they were already loaded. I think it, if anything, he needed to be on that court if he could physically play. He needed to be on there because otherwise, like let's say you know he did what you said and he just sat out and they won another championship without him, then it would have been like, well, why the fuck did you go there from OKC if they're already loaded? Like, again, you're lo- you're joining a loaded team, and they won again without you? Like, I think it's better that he that he tried everything he could to be on the, to get on the floor, but I don't know. I, I um, shout out to my buddy Chase. He, uh, he follows basketball, like, better than anybody I know, and he... Well, he'll never let me forget that he he thinks the Warriors pressured him back on the court, but I, I don't know. That's a different story for another day. Oh, well, that's what I was saying. And the only other argument I want to make, not argument, but a point I like to make, I feel like it gets unnoticed. I think the 2019 Raptors, it's a very similar situation to what happened in 2015. I think if that, because that Cavaliers team, remember, it was just LeBron and basically Del Vadova, and they still went to six with the Warriors. If they had either one of Love or Kyrie, I think Cleveland Cavaliers won the championship in 2015 as opposed to 16. Maybe they still win both, but that was that's just one thing I always think of when people say, like, oh, the Raptors didn't beat the Warriors because they were depleted. And I say, oh, I think the Warriors beat the Cavs in 15 because they were depleted because we saw the next year the same Cavs team beat the Warriors. Um, I honestly can't remember that off the top of my head what was going on in that 2015 series, but... I could have sworn they had Kevin Love. I think he just didn't show up. They were both injured. Love, Love was out in the first both round. Injured? Kyrie went out yep. and gave one of the finals. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I think Love like, was a little more familiar. Something, and I think Kyrie was like his ankle or his knee something. I do remember that one dude, Della, whatever his name is. Del- I do remember he went, yeah, he went off that season and he ended up getting, he cashed in on that performance for that series, but he hasn't done shit after that. But yeah. I, I don't I honestly don't just don't remember enough to like even give you like a proper response to that. No, it's all good. It's just a point I always like to make when people say like, oh, the twenty fifteen, the twenty nineteen Raptors. It's like there's always cases like that. It's like with the Patriots, like, oh, what if Seattle had ran it on the one yard line or Good lord, that shit rang the fuck out of my ear. Sorry, that's a I was just I was getting a text message. I gotta figure out a way to turn that off without uh <laughs> Goes from my whenever I get an iMessage, just goes straight through my Mac. I gotta turn on Do Not Disturb. I got a question for you. Hold on. So I, I got a question for you. So you got the Patriots multiple times. You got the Raptors. You got the Capitals. Is yeah. it just the Maple Leafs and that's it? Uh, the Blue Jays. Oh, the Blue Jays. That's a win. Well, I feel like that. I feel like with this, uh, with uh, Bo Bichette and Vladdy, I think they can do something in the next couple of years. You know what? I think they can do, to be honest. Like, I don't know what's stopping them. Like, it's just they need a better bullpen, and then they need um, – they just got to secure the outfield. I just want to see if, how Gritchick can do in a 162-game season. It's like, look, right now the Jays and also to your White Sox, we weren't expected to really go anywhere. But then mm-hmm. look now. You guys are number one in the AL, and we're right there, right yeah. knocking on the door with uh, the Yankees in the race. Because I'm, like, I've debated – Going when whenever I redo my trip to Canada, like instead of going to the games I was going to, just going for like a, you know, like a three game, or you know, a couple games for the Blue Jays because I feel like that would be just as fun, especially with you know, the two young guys. So a hell of a lot cheaper. That's true. That's yeah. true. When they were bad last year, you could get tickets on StubHub cheaper than the box office. Wow. That's yeah, like, the life. Nine, like, it's like as you, well, everyone knows, stuff up is always in U.S. dollars, and I remember seeing five hundred level tickets in September for like nine dollars a ticket. Yeah, it sounds like the White Sox too. It's just you know, like ha- half price the the sticker price. So yeah, we're getting there with baseball, but. And I'm also lucky because I got Toronto FC as well. I know not a lot of people pay attention to MLS, but I was there for when they won the championship, and that was something special. So there you go. That's another check off the list then, because yeah. that's uh, it's not a real league though. Well, I know it's not a real league. I it's, it's just major league soccer, okay? Major. Oh, it's trash. Shut up, Justin. <laughs> Is that the same one that the? Uh, hold on, I'm gonna do some research real quick. Auto fire. Um, no, the 
Is Sporty KC in that league? I think yeah. so. Yeah, well, what about that one time we tied? I don't know. I'm just looking this up to see. It is It is better. In all seriousness, it is a lot better than it was five, seven years ago. It's going oh, yeah. on. For oh, sure. 100%. If the... If um, I forgot which team was it that was trying to get Messi to play his last two years of his contract in their team, I think it New was York New York. FC. Yeah, it was New York, yeah. right? Yeah. If they get him, like, I, I'm not gonna front. I fucking, I, I try to go either see him as close to the West Coast as possible if he comes over here. If not, I try to go and watch a game at Yankee Stadium because to see that dude play live, that would be awesome. Who was that one that went to like one of the Los Angeles teams or something? That comes like, to I, I don't yeah, know if that he's was He's not it. there anymore, though. No, neither one of them are. Beckham actually is the ownership in the new team. In the oh, team. Beckham. Yeah. yeah. Now remember. I'm into, what's it called? Instead of, uh, instead of this, the like the MLS, I've been paying attention more to, to women's soccer, like for the U.S. team, and that's a lot more fun, in my opinion. Rip, but, why is your favorite wrestler John Cena? Because I'm <laughs> really getting into WWE. He was like, it was the guy. Like, it was what when he had his title reign. Was... Pardon me? Give me the year. 2006? Like, yeah, let's go. What pay per view? Uh, just after Unforgiven. Unforgiven? Oh, yeah. when he beat Edge at TLC. Yeah, yeah, I Wait, was there for that. There? Wait, what was, what was the question that he, he gave the response 2006 to? When did I, why, do I, why is John Cena my favorite wrestler? Oh, okay. And when did you start watching wrestling? Yeah. Wait, you started watching wrestling in 2006? Yeah. You didn't know that? No. Yeah. Wow, I didn't know that. Okay. Hmm. And I've been catching up on a lot of, like, in the recent years, I started watching a lot more older content and stuff like that. And then part of me goes, like, fuck, I wish I was a fan of this, like, back in the day, just because seeing stuff from, like, say... What would you call like 2000, 2001? Like, is that still a technically attitude era, or was that because ruthless aggression was yeah. over too? Okay. Um, like even don't, just watching. Like, don't, don't let anyone fool you though, Griff. The attitude era is not like fucking. Everyone makes it out to be like just pristine. It's it made of the highest. It was the highest of- rated era, but it's like if you go back and watch a lot of those raw episodes on the network, trash. there's a lot of trash in them. Yeah. It was yeah, big at the time. Like 96 or 97, one of the worst years that the company had. 95. 95. Like, I knew there was one year in the 90s that was bad. And then even... But, like, the thing I was saying, like, I watched a bunch of 01. Like, I watched WrestleMania 17, which I know was a pay per view. A lot of people wanted me to watch. And then I also watched SummerSlam 01. And there was a match on there that I absolutely just loved. That was uh, Kurt Angle versus Stone Cold. I was there. That was a good match. That was a good match. Yeah, and then Rock, Booker T was the main event. The, um... Uh, the year 2000, in my opinion, is the best. Like, just top to bottom, January to December year of pay-per-views. So many good pay-per-views in that year. There was one like, that was, I was meaning to watch, because uh, I never got time for it, but SummerSlam 2000, because I heard the main event was good. I think it was Angle, Rock, and was it Mankind or Austin? Triple H. Oh, Triple H. Uh, it was all right. It was just the the Stephanie McMahon, Triple H, and Kurt Angle love triangle. Like, it dominated that whole storyline. Oh, okay. The month before was arguably the best pay per view the whole year. It was fully loaded. It was uh, they dubbed it as the triple main event going into that show. It was uh, it was Rock and Benoit, um, Taker and Angle, and then you had Jericho and Triple H in a last man standing match. So it was it was such a good show. Oh wow! Hey, question for you: um, Did you go to WrestleMania twenty one? I did not know. Okay, because I was about to say, because like during when, because COVID is obviously hit right before WrestleMania, and like I remember, I watched like nineteen, I watched finish nineteen, I watched twenty one and twenty two, and like even like twenty one top to bottom, even two is a pretty solid show. Like not like the one of the best, but like there's some pretty well, good matches on there. That's pretty great. What? That one's pretty great. Money in the bank. You got Orton Taker. You got Angle Sean. Even uh, the title main event. The two title changes. You have uh, Eddie and Ray as the opener. Yeah. Oh, right. I forgot about that. Um, you got the sumo match. So I was waiting to see if someone was going to bring that up. Yeah, the only matches I didn't like that were okay was that one and then uh, Trish versus, I think it was Christy Hemi. Yeah, she was on Playboy, so she got that match. But no, my match of the night for that one was um, Angle versus Michaels. 
I, I, need I need to watch that match over again. I need to watch that match. I need to watch Jericho and Sean over again. I watched that they have the first rock with Angle and Sean, and it makes the match seem like it's six stars. Really? It makes it seem like it's Okada Omega. I'll have to watch it. The um, thing is, like, sto- untold stories or something on the network. Mm. If I had to ask you, though, Miguel, with back to WrestleMania 17, the other reason why I say I like those is because I liked uh, JR and Heyman on commentary. What would you say your favorite match from WrestleMania 17 was? Uh, the gimmick battle royal. <laughs> that was really fun. I'm not going to lie. But it, it, it just because it's so fun to watch and it's just madness whenever it was a TLC match. I know a lot of people love Austin Rock, and that's I won't dispute that, but to me it's just because of how much fun I watch, even watching it live uh, on TV, and even just now, it still holds up. That was a good one. My personal one was actually um, Undertaker and Triple H. That's a good match, too. That is, that, that, that is a good one. I, I loved how they even... They brawled through, like, I, I don't know. It was not a no-DQ match, but they fucking just acted like it was. They went out into the crowd, and I think he he either gave him a last round or a choke slam off of something, and then the he thought Triple H just died. It was off the camera structure. Oh, I don't okay, know what the move was. was, but I remember they got all the way to where the camera set up, and as four people in here who have been to WrestleMania, as we all know that, hey, it's not the camera to the ring's not that... uh exactly close that's crazy to think that it was supposed to be sean and triple h that night like that's just so crazy yeah. i'm also looking at the stadium right now being like oh man it sucks that oh, wrestlemania may not happen here anymore because this stadium honestly looks beautiful well so far it's got a good blue <laughs> it's got a good blue if they, if they took the the blue for the logo which i know that they have like the black and gold but if they took that blue that'd be a good good mania colors if Mania was uh, to take place there, would you go, Justin? Where? L.A. No. Not surprised. But I, but I wasn't sure. I, was, I don't need to go back. Not I, anytime soon. I was planning on it. It was just that um, with the border still being closed and everything, and I don't know when the whole travel ban is going to be lifted. It's just too risky to invest that much money to go because I don't want to have to go and then back out and it's like, oh, hey, I spent, as all you know as well, WrestleMania ain't cheap. Yeah, plus if you do a package with the Lorenzos, it's going to be complicated as fuck (laughs) because if you're the only one that can't go and they can, you know. Exactly. Like, I don't want to have to, like, even say God for, like, I just have a feeling the travel ban still may be on coming the next year. But, like, you say even if I were to go and then, I go, but then I have to quarantine for two weeks when I get home. It's just not worth it to take three weeks off of work. That's all. I'll watch it at your house, Griff. You know <laughs> what? If, if the board if the board is open the opposite way, you're welcome. You still have your ticket voucher from last year that will be honored at the door. There we go. I'll bring the pink Whitney. We'll, we'll be all set. You need a voucher to get into Griff's store? <laughs> it's just, yeah, yeah. It's just me. You got to like, pet the dog, and then after, you know, that's it. What kind of dog? One's a Portuguese water dog, and one is a, I believe, Border Collie and Aussie Shep mix. Uh, he's a rescue, but I think he's purely Border Collie. We actually got him. I was, it was, I was at the Hall of Fame ceremony in Dallas when uh, we got the dog home, and then I met him after I got back home uh, Tuesday night. I just had to look up Portuguese water dog because that's probably one of the greatest names I've ever heard. So many words. It's a lot of words. <laughs> All right, well, Justin, you got, you got any uh, got anything else? Oh, I think that's it. All right, well, on with this, Griff. I got a question. You you know more about hockey than I do. Do you think the Blackhawks should fire Stan Bowman? I know he's made a lot of moves that have pissed you guys off, but the fact that you guys <laughs> actually made a good run into the – I know you only made it to the first round, but you weren't even supposed to make the playoffs originally. Mm-hmm. Keep him for now, and if next year you don't make the playoffs again, I probably would say let him go. But for now, yep. it's one. You don't go now. Like, I I don't think you should fire him right now. I know a lot of I know I've seen Blackhawk fans want him fired for some mm-hmm. of the very questionable moves, including mm-hmm. the Dom Panarin for Sod trade. Yeah, but yeah, I, I still think, I still think they'll 
he gave you guys three championships. So he's, he's got a bit of a leash, but the leash, I think, starting to become smaller. I think the leash is at its end. And I think that someone else brought a leash over and was like, here, use this one instead. So now I think he, I think he should have been gone you know, a couple of years ago, but that's besides the point. They should have never fired uh, Quinville, but who am I? You know? I think NHL coaches now realize, like, after the whole Pittsburgh situation, because I know Miguel's a Penguins fan, <laughs> when they got off to that awful start in 15-16, they fired the one coach, brought in Mike Sullivan, and they won two cups since. So I think a lot of coaches or GMs will see, hey, if my team's not performing well by Christmas or the New Year, in with get rid of the old and bring in someone new. And also worked for St. Louis last year, too. So that's why I think Quenville was fired. But that was, that was kind of different, though, Griff, because our prior coach was like a drill sergeant. Like, he needed to go because the players were starting to rebel against him. I don't know if the, the Blackhawks coach is a hard ass and people are starting to – not buying to what he's saying, but that's why we let ours go. I don't know about the Hawks coach. Q was probably the greatest coach of all time, and then they just didn't like him in the front office. the the two The two main people, Stan and McDonough, they were like, "I don't like this guy, so we got to get rid of him." And then they just threw in Colleton, which I feel like Colleton's like a good guy, but like, and maybe he would have been a good coach like eventually, but they just threw him in, and you know, they 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 just aren't aren't good and. I feel like none of the some of the players that have been there for a long time, they just don't care for him. So I don't know. Hey, I have a question for Griff. I know this is not my podcast, but I have a question for Griff. Cool, go ahead. Okay, we can talk about anything in here, right? Is there anything off the limits? I don't want to scare you, but well, just say whatever you want. If okay. Griff doesn't answer, we just end the podcast. <laughs> well, no, don't don't do that because I got some stuff I want to get off my chest before we do that. But um, Griff, did you listen to uh, Ravi and uh, Justin recall the Dallas trip? Yeah, I did. I and I listened to Ravi's video about your, and I also watched your video about it too. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Um, what well, <laughs> do you? <laughs> what do? You, what are your like recollections of that night when when <laughs> Ravi wanted to go hang out with Aaliyah? What do you remember in your in your words? Oh man! Honestly, it happened kind of quick because, like, I remember we were at all at the high. I remember first off the beginning of the night was me waiting outside of Wale Mania. I didn't even get in. I also remember Ravi was hyping it up like I hyped up uh, Muffle Outer Monday. Um, <laughs> but that's a different story for another day. But I remember seeing you guys and being like, "Fuck it, I'm not going in. I'll just waste." I think like twenty bucks I paid for my ticket. And then we went back to the hotel, and I think Ravi still wanted to get the night going. Him, I, and Ivan went to McDonald's. Ivan was pretty trash at that point, so we didn't want to bring him to the Fairmont. But I didn't really see it as, like, the whole knowing what was going on. I, I didn't know until, like, kind of in the moment with the whole Ravi Aliyah stuff. Like, I knew they had a history, but I didn't really – I think kind of my na- young, naive self didn't catch on right away. So that's probably why when we got there, I kind of was, like, going – like, kind of, like <laughs> – Oh, like kind of deer in the headlights because, as we all know, that was my first mania trip. So, walking into a hotel and seeing a bunch of wrestlers, like I was at the point where that mark in me still took over. So, if I did that and kind of like how he said, like the whole like where I just be like, "Holy shit!" Like, yeah, that that's what happened. But no, as for the Aaliyah thing, I I don't remember it exactly, but I think part of my dumb dumbass self thought that hey, maybe the whole. Oh, Ravi gets Aaliyah, I get live, but then in a pretty clear reality, you know, I have absolutely no fucking chance with her. Like, I'm not exactly uh, Mr. <laughs> Guy over here, but then I think I remember it was either she was with Enzo at the time, or I think... She was? Yeah, I think Liv was dating Enzo, or I they were know. seeing each other. At I remember just at some point, the two of them, I think, were within proximity to each other. And then I remember just... I don't know if it was the whole thing got called off or what exactly happened, but I don't really take it as I was clock locking Ravi. See, I, the, reality, I was... the reality of the story is, by the way, because Ravi claims I clock blocked him, he clock blocks himself. Yeah, he did against with uh, the best time to just remember a salty battery. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I need to hear this now. <laughs> Wait, what? We were out for Canada Day at a country bar, probably about half an hour from where I am, closer to where Justin lives. But I remember uh, there's a there's a friend of Justin's who's pretty attractive, and Ravi was trying to hit on her, and she was just not having it. So then he was just fucking pissed off and salty for the rest of the night, and that's where he started saying, "Oh, a salty seven seven seven." A salty. 
<laughs> I'm so mad at Justin that he never told us about that. I forgot about this. Do you all remember Justin Nashville North? I think it was like well, I 20 remember. I remember, I remember. I know exactly who it is. I know what we're talking about. Yeah. Salty <laughs> Make the t shirts. Oh, oh. Ravi's definitely not going to do that. He's going to hate me for saying that, but that's I'll... it. All right. <laughs> That's no, it. You're not gonna listen to this anyways. It's He's fine. not gonna listen to this. Someone's gonna have to tell him if, if... Miguel will come one day. Yeah, Miguel will I'm bring cool. it up. He'll come out one day. All right, well, that a salty battery. Yeah. <laughs> All right, that's it. Griff, thanks for coming on. Miguel, thanks for coming on again. Hey, and, hold uh... on. Anybody that's listening to this, yeah. quit being a fucking creep to female wrestlers. All right, quit trying to break into their houses. Quit making those stupid ass Instagram pages where you pretend they're your best friend. This is getting really nauseating, and I really wanted to get that off my chest because even after, even before the thing happened with Sonya Deville, these motherfuckers are giving wrestling fans like us a bad name. Like you, you can be a, the biggest fan in the world. You can decorate the fuck out of your walls with posters and figures and whatever you collect of that person, but please do not spend three hundred dollars on a fucking cameo asking out a female wrestler. Do not find out where they live and go approach them and think that they will be cool with it. Because if you follow David Dobrik, you know celebrities do not like for you to go to their house. You can know where they live, but do not act on it for crying out loud. It's just these these fan accounts and, and people that are just out there being psychos or just... Like, especially in everything that's going on in the world right now. And on top of that, you're going to like just be a fucking creep and... You just warn a restraining order. Just chill the hell out. Be a fan. Support them by buying their shit. Tweeting at them from a distance. Don't go to their house. And just quit being a fucking psycho. And there you go. That's... You're that what? <laughs> exactly. We're out of here. That's it. Talk to you tomorrow. <laughs>